Today's episode is a race against time. If we have any hope of bringing the story of Hi, I'm Mary Mary to a happy conclusion, there's a mystery that needs to be solved. So today, I'm equipping you with everything you need to know. And from there, well, let's just try to solve this thing so we can get this girl the help that she needs before it's too late. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Film Theory and the long-awaited part two in our breakdown of the psychological horror channel, Hi, I'm Mary Mary. If you missed part one, and I gotta be honest, chances are you did because it got flagged in YouTube systems as being too scary, trust me, this is a series that you're gonna wanna catch up on. It was a really great episode of Film Theory covering a fascinating series, so do yourself a favor, and if you didn't watch it the first time or you just need to catch up, click the video right there. Up there in the upper right-hand corner of the screen, or I don't know, there's some fancy thing you can do on your TV to pull up the recommended videos. Anyway, here's what the thumbnail looks like. Watch it. In the meantime, let me give you what you need to know to understand the rest of today's theory. Hi, I'm Mary Mary is an independent YouTube channel that's perhaps one of the scariest and most disturbing that we've ever covered on the channel. Other series, like Salad Fingers and Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, are certainly disturbing and shocking. Don't get me wrong, but ultimately they don't feel real. They're shows. They're creepy ones to be sure, but there's a safety in the fact that they're obviously a produced series. Mary Mary, on the other hand, is real. Raw. It's unfiltered, it's aggressive, it's unpredictable. And as a result, you just exist in this pool of dread, never knowing when the next scare is gonna happen, making it something that is terrifying to watch. The plot goes like this. A young girl named Mary wakes up one day in a copy of her parents' home that she can't escape from. The doors won't open, the windows won't break. The days are normal, but at night, she's haunted by four entities. The Veiled Lady, the Beauty, the Shadow, and the darkness. By tracking the entity's behavior and locating flashing messages hidden throughout the videos when they appear, we were able to conclude last episode that the house is symbolic of Mary being trapped in her own mind, and that the entities she's haunted by are the mental illnesses that she has to struggle with. Her mind is being tortured by the monsters of anxiety, regret, depression, and self-loathing. But the story doesn't stop there. You see, there's a fifth and final monster that we didn't cover in that last episode, one that doesn't roam the house, one that lurks outside and may just be the most sinister and most dangerous monster haunting Mary of them all. And that's the one that we have to explore today. That's the one that we have to uncover the truth of if we have any hope of helping Mary come to a positive conclusion in the series, because yes, this is a series that we can affect change in. But in order to do that, we have to first reveal the fifth and final evil of Hi, I'm Mary Mary. So Mary is trapped in this house, right? Every night having to deal with these demons harassing her. But then, in episode 8, discovery, something changes. While being chased through the house by the veiled lady, she throws open a door only to discover that she's now outside, swimming. As the video's description says, I found my garden. The next episode, Outside Inside, shows us that garden. Which I gotta say looks more like a forest really, but whatever, she can call it whatever she wants. Mary feels safe here, at peace. As the video says, she could stay here for hours. By the end of the episode, she's booted out of the garden back into the horrors of her daily life, but determined to find a way to get herself back in. Eventually, through some unexplained means, she does find her way back, and as we see in check-in, she stays there almost every night, preferring it to reality. But not even the garden is safe from intruders, as we see in, well, the episode titled Intruder. The garden is home to a fifth entity, the woman in white, a mysterious figure who hides her face and can only mouth words to Mary, a figure who seems to be telling Mary to leave the garden, and that's what we're here to discuss today. Is the woman in white just a malicious entity, this one disguising herself in a color commonly associated with purity and goodness, with the intention of getting Mary out of her safe place and back into the hands of the monsters at home? Or is the woman in white the one and only force for good trying to help Mary? Is the garden Mary's only safe haven from the creatures that torment her actually causing her more harm? I think the answer is yes. I believe that the garden is Mary's biggest and most dangerous villain, a representation of Mary's turn to drug use as she struggles with her mental illnesses. And not just any drug either, I think it's heroin in particular. And the woman in white is the one trying to pull her away from that addiction. So let's break down all the clues that Mary has left for us. First, let's just think narratively about what it means for Mary to be able to escape the house that she's trapped in. Remember, the house is a symbol of Mary's mind, her mental state. State. So leaving it is going to be her entering an altered mental state, like a drug trip. It's also not uncommon for hard drug users to describe their first experience as euphoric, giving them the exact thing they needed to feel better about whatever led them to the drug to begin with. And for Mary, that's exactly what we're seeing. The garden initially gives her a sense of freedom and openness, away from all the monsters that have been torturing her mind. But just like with drug use, the garden
garden quickly turns into something much more sinister. We see Mary getting dependent on the garden. As she says in the opening of Intruder, I'm so glad you're all my friends, but no offense, I like the garden best. She openly tells us that she spends every night in it, that she no longer feels the need to look for answers as to why she's trapped in this house. And slowly, we start to see the garden decay. Mary's trips to the garden are never quite as enjoyable as that first time. In fact, as the series goes on, the garden begins to change. The sun is rarely around. Rainy, cloudy weather begins to pervade the place. Mary begins to find abandoned places and broken things. Sometimes the garden is literally just water where she starts to drown. We're given a very dissonant imagery of the garden being torn apart, with a different Mary screaming at the spot where peaceful Mary is resting. Almost as though reality is trying to break through, but can't. The garden even starts to make her physically physically sick. As at the end of the video intruder, the camera collapses and we hear her vomiting just off screen. <laughs> These chaotic events are echoed in her Twitter account with statements like, My garden naps don't seem to cut it anymore. Sleeping in the garden doesn't feel fulfilling. And I think I might be getting sick. I feel nauseous a lot, but not during the day, usually when I enter the garden. This is all a direct parallel to the five stages of drug addiction. First use, regular use, risky use, dependence, and disorder. Mary's first time is practically an accident, something that she stumbles into as she runs from the veiled lady, and it's one that offers temporary relief. But once she starts regularly going to the garden, the trips become shorter, they're less pleasant. She feels the need to go there more frequently on a regular basis, and just like in drug addiction, as the addiction gets worse, she loses interest in hobbies and pushes away relationships. In this case, her relationship with us, the audience. She prefers the drugs. She prefers visiting the garden over spending time with us, the people who were helping her get through the mental illnesses in a healthy way. Even when the drugs start making her sick, she can't seem to stop. Meanwhile, back in the house, when she returns to it, the monsters appear to be getting worse. The shadow, representative of her regret, becomes so large that only its hand can fit into the kitchen. Beauty is shown towering over Mary as she lays lifeless in her reflection, even ripping into Mary as we see in the final video uploaded onto the channel so far. The Veiled Lady is physically harming her, and previously the only thing she did, according to Mary in her livestream, was say mean things. So it's definitely looking like with the discovery of the garden, the problems in her home, again a metaphor for her mind, are worsening. Now, I mentioned earlier that I thought that Mary's garden wasn't just any drug addiction, I thought it was heroin. And there are a handful of telltale signs that this is most likely the case. In the video titled The Last Eight Months, her hair begins to fall out, or at least thin to the point where it's easily torn off. Her dental health also shows extreme signs of damage, pulling out a tooth towards the latter half of that same video. Both symptoms have been connected to drug use, and not just any drug use, heroin. Her hair loss is likely tied to a condition known as telogen effluvia, where drug use shocks the body's biological systems, causing certain hair follicles to prematurely stop growing, in essence killing them, resulting in the hair falling out three months later. Same thing with the dental issues. In 2012, the Journal of American Dental Association found that heroin and methamphetamine users had higher rates of tooth decay and oral issues, as those drugs did things like cause the roots of the teeth to retract. But our last and most obvious clue as to what's going on here is the repeated imagery of Mary rubbing her arm. Starting in check-in and continuing all the way to where the series is now, we can see her repeatedly checking her forearm. This is her checking for track marks, areas of discoloration along the veins that become damaged due to injecting drugs intravenously. So Mary is clearly in a bad state here. Already she's dealing with mental issues, and now we see that she's stumbled into the world of drug addiction as well, which is only making her existing problems worse. Enter the mysterious woman in white, the fifth and final entity, one that appears inside Mary's garden and one that Mary doesn't trust, but one that also appears to be trying to help. Don't get me wrong, she is certainly a creepy figure. I've met a lot of shy people in my time, but even I'd freak out a bit if anyone covered their face and started shaking their eyeballs at me. And to make matters worse, she doesn't talk. She just mouths her words. Which is a bummer because both Mary and I suck at lip reading. Oh my god, I, I can't lip read, I'm sorry. But, unlike Mary, I fortunately have the power of rewind, and I could take this scene line by line. And if you rewatch this clip way too many times, and I mean seriously, way too many times, this video has like 79,000 views and I swear most of them are from me just replaying this 20 second clip over and over again, you can actually start to figure out what the woman in white is trying to tell Mary. Mary, 
Knowing that the garden is dangerous, the fact that the woman in white wants her to leave makes it seem like Mary may have actually finally found someone that's on her side. And that's not the only way that the woman in white seems to be trying to reach Mary. Mary has a blog where she posts things from around her house, including journal entries, drawings, and corrupted pictures. There's actually a lot of really cool stuff hiding around in this blog, hidden in all the entries. Just stuff everywhere that really fleshes out this story. But it's the website's source code that I want to call out right now. You see, there's a hidden message that you can piece together by checking the source code of various posts across this blog. The message is really long, so I'm going to condense it a little bit, but it essentially goes like this. Hello, hello? Oh, sorry, that's a different source code-based mystery franchise. Uh, let me try again. Hello? Hello? Hey, am I getting through? Can you all see this? Good. I think this might actually be working. I've been trying to reach out to Mary ever since she got here, but she hasn't been able to see slash hear slash register me whatsoever it seems. I'm not even sure I can physically get into the house. They are poisoning her mind, making her think this is normal, making her comfortable with this situation. You've seen me before, in the garden. You all know me. I am just like the rest of them. But I promise, you can trust me. So, since the woman in white is the only character that we've seen in the garden, we know that this message is coming from her. And with her being just like the rest of them, it means that she too is a construct of Mary's mind. Most likely her conscious, or her morality center. The thing that's trying to tell her right from wrong. Anyway, the message continues. I care about Mary. Really, I want to help her. I am fighting for control, but I'm just too weak to fight. That's where you all come in. I can't see for certain that she entirely trusts you all, but there's a chance that she might listen to you. I need you to tell her. Now, that's not me censoring anything. The message just cuts off right there in the source code. You know this because she tries again. It doesn't want to go through. That's weird. I think they figured out that I'm trying. Okay, I'm gonna try again. Tell her that... I have an idea. I'm gonna encode what I need you all to relay to her. I'm pretty sure they won't be able to censor it that way. I'll send it in little parts. You'll know when it's coming. You're all smart people. It won't take long. If this works, I might be able to try to reach her in person soon. Good luck. I beg you to trust me. We want the same thing here. I love you, Mary. See you soon. Hopefully. So there it is. The woman in white is a force for good trying to get a message across. In addition to the white lady's attempts at communication, we also have something new beginning to happen back at Mary's home. Mary begins to get phone calls, and the doorbell starts to ring. Shut up! This is coming off as maddening to Mary in the episodes, but in truth, it's her mind twisting what is actually a good sign. Yet another example of people from the outside world trying to break through, trying to help her, trying to reach her. And that is where the story is left off. The last video was seven months ago and it shows Mary at her absolute lowest. But the thing is, long gaps are normal for this series. And there is clearly hope for Mary here. The series has obviously offered us as the viewers a challenge via the woman in white censored message. It's hidden out there for us to discover, most likely hidden via Mary's blog and the photos that it contains which I'll link to down below in the description. So if we have any hope of bringing this story to a happy conclusion, we need to find that message and relay it back to Mary before it's too late, before the series comes to a tragic ending. And that is unfortunately where we have to leave things for now. I'll search for the message, you search for the message, and hopefully we can solve the mystery and finally get Mary the help she needs and bring the story to the happy conclusion that it deserves before it's too late. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And...